Genealogy databases are powerful tools to manage your family relationships, no matter how complicated they get. But to start using Family Tree Maker, you must first build a family tree in the program. Howdy, welcome to Family History Fanatics. My name is Devin Noel Lee, and I'd love to help you climb your family tree and have a fun along the way. If you're just starting out, or you have a mess of a family tree in other locations, and you're trying to do better, then start with a blank new tree. Start by opening up the Family Tree Maker icon. One criticism I have with this program is that it may take quite some time to load. But when you do, you will be in the plan menu. You'll see the option to start a new tree and the prompt to enter what you know. The blank pedigree starting template appears on the right hand side. Enter the first person that will start this family tree. This person could be yourself or another ancestor that you're building a family tree around. In this case, I will start with Robert Victor Zimstein. After you key in that information, you'll notice that Family Tree Maker has automatically added the surname to the new tree name field. It also shows you a possible file location where you'll save the tree to your hard drive. If you want to change the name, you can. Just take note that Family Tree Maker doesn't like slash marks, but you can use an ampersand. Using the folder browsing window, you can also change where you file the family tree on your computer. Next, choose the sex of the person and then begin typing in the birth date. You'll see the date calculator tool if you click on the small calculator icon in that field. This calculator is a handy tool if you're uncertain about a date. And since this tool will appear anytime you add a date to a fact in this program, it's worth highlighting. In short, there's no need to leave your program to find a date calculator tool on Google, which is so nice. Be advised that you do not have to add complete dates when building a family tree profile for a person. Sometimes all you have is a birth year or a range of years. Enter what you have. Next, type the location name for the birthplace if you know it. In this case, I know the province of Ontario in the country of Canada. When I click the pencil icon, this resolve place name tool comes up. Become very familiar with this tool. I've made videos about cleaning up place names and this icon opens a window that gives you a place name suggestion an option to add more place details about the location you're entering. A few tips. If you have cemetery names for burial locations, churches for baptism and christenings and so forth, use the place details fields for those name and keep the place name limited to city, county, country, or other such geopolitical groupings that fit the location you're adding. Next, add the name of a parent to either the father or the mother's names field. Once again, Family Tree Maker has a pencil icon and that will open up this field. You'll see the option to add a suffix for junior, senior, third, MD, etc. You can also click the insert simple option to use special characters. Sadly, you don't have an option to add titles here such as princess, duke, lady, doctor, captain, and so forth. That comes later. Also notice you don't have place for alternative names or nicknames. Don't put those names in this name field either. Again, you'll add those later. When you've completed this quick form, Family Tree Maker will save your data and build a new database. Then it will place it in the file location selected and you're ready to dive into genealogy research. But what if you have your tree on Ancestry or Family Search or in another program entirely? Do you have to start over from scratch? No, <laughs> no you don't. Family Tree Maker has a few options for you. Notice you can import an existing tree and if you click on that, you'll be able to import something from an earlier version of Family Tree Maker, a GEDCOM that shares between multiple programs, the very old personal ancestral file, or from the legacy Family Tree platform. Click on the browse to import the tree, give it a new name, click continue, and then you'll be able to have that tree imported into Family Tree Maker. In this example, I pulled in a GEDCOM file that I created from 
another genealogy platform called Townley, Jedcom file, and now the new name currently is Townley FTM for a family tree maker tree. The next option is to download your tree from Ancestry, and after you click on that yellow button, then the sign in prompt will happen. Sign in with your username and password, and then you'll be shown all of the trees that you have associated with your Ancestry account. And notice I actually have several here. I can select the one I want, and then I click Download Tree, and then Family Tree Maker will import that new tree into Family Tree Maker, and I can start using both, and they will be synced. As I said, they will be synced. When you get to this window, it will say Download and Link, you can sync changes manually or automatically. I'm gonna recommend manually. I think you should make your changes on Family Tree Maker and then sync them to Ancestry. Or when you upload your tree, you need to decide when you wanna sync them. The other thing that you can do is decide whether you want to download the citation media. Now, what is the citation media? The citation media is not necessarily the pictures that you added to your family tree. It is the images linked to the ancestry sources. So let's say you linked a city directory that you found on ancestry to a profile in ancestry family tree. Well, when you download that to family tree maker, you have the option of not only downloading the source citation, but also the linked image. If you are doing genealogy on a budget, you probably wanna download this media while you have your Ancestry subscription active so that you can have those for you. If you perpetually have a subscription to Ancestry, then I would actually recommend that you don't download all of that media because it can actually hog up a lot of space on your computer if that is an issue for you. And it also just creates digital clutter. And I would just recommend leaving it on Ancestry. That is my recommendation. What do you think? Let me know in the description, in the comment section below. Once you have made all of your selections, click the download button, and then Ancestry will begin to download your family tree. Now, be mindful of something. If your family tree is extremely large, let's say over a thousand people, and for some of you that may, you may think, wow, that's a small tree. If your tree is really, really large, chances are this is going to take hours and hours. So maybe you wanna set this to run overnight. If you're in the Western Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere, to get those together. In other words, if you're in the United States, run it overnight. If you're not in the United States, then I would recommend that you run it during your daytime, but that might take a whole day out of your researching in order to process this tree. Just keep that in mind. Another one of those reasons why I don't necessarily recommend downloading all of that media, particularly when you're creating a new tree in Family Tree Maker from Ancestry. Once everything's finished, you're going to have your tree downloaded from Ancestry. And from that point out, you can add changes to Family Tree Maker or onto Ancestry, and then come back to the program and sync them later. The other option is to download your tree from Family Search. You have to grant permission after signing in that you will allow Family Tree Maker to get information from Family Search. Now you can either select yourself as the home person in order to then pull from the One World Family Tree, or you can put in a personal ID number of someone else that's on the Family Search Family Tree, and they will be the central person in order to then grab their additional relatives. On this screen, you can also change the number of generations, ancestral generations, and descendants to grab and put into your file. And do you want to include descendants of your ancestors if you're doing descendancy research? Give it a name and make sure you identify the file location. When you have all of that set, click continue. And then Family Tree Maker will import your tree into the Family Tree Maker platform. Now, there's something to keep in mind with Family Search Family Trees. From that point on, your tree is not in sync. 
And so you may read information from FamilySearch into Family Tree Maker, but you cannot write as of the time of this video to Family Search the same way you can write to Ancestry from Family Tree Maker. So that is something to keep in mind. But regardless of whether you started your tree by importing information one by one or downloading from Ancestry or downloading it from Family Search, now you're all prepared to start adding more details to your Family Tree file. I know this was quick and easy, but if you have any other questions that you would like to have answered in future videos about Family Tree Maker, be sure to put them in the comment section below. Now that everybody knows how to get started making trees in Family Tree Maker, be sure to like this video on the way out, subscribe if you haven't already, and then be sure to watch this playlist for more tips and tricks on how to use Family Tree Maker.